uh, I'm Paul from Vienna, uh, and I'm, I will try to say a little bit about Mastodon um, and ActivityPub. Who of you have heard of Mastodon yet? Oh, that's cool. Mastodon users, how many? Wow, that's great. So probably you know most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about. So um, like I said, I'm from Vienna. We have still a very healthy mesh in Vienna. 200 nodes running OLSR version 1. Not much innovation happening there. But it's stable and it, it works. And com contribution happens, but it's a very small number of people that are involved in this. And I was really into that stuff. And it really, really bugged me over the years that even when we, when we put up mesh networks, so like open communication systems, People end up using Facebook over it, and that that really that really that really is, I don't I don't I didn't know what to do about it. And then a friend came up to me and said, "Hey Paul, um, have you looked at decentralized identities yet?" And I said, what, "What's that?" What? And I will tell you now a little bit where the connection is here. So I'm I'm thinking about ways to ex to escape the what, how I call it the platform zombie apocalypse of Facebook and the other social silos. Uh, this, this, the current state is sad, so they have uh, still a rising number of users. This is Facebook, uh, way over 2.2 billion monthly active users. So that's, uh, there is not much uh, in the, so their reputation is going down. That's a good thing. Um, and these two things together led to some people getting really seri about, serious about developing an alternative. And right now, I think the main term for this alternative is called the Fediverse. This is too small to read for you, I guess. But this is the number of projects, the number of services that are powered of the current Fediverse. The leading one is Mastodon, with more than 2 million users right now. Then there are uh, other in interesting uh, services, are Peertube, which is supposed to be something that behaves like YouTube. Um, Matrix is also part of the Fediverse, but does not use the same underlying protocol as many of the others do, which is ActivityPub, which I will talk about in a minute. So this, this list is really impressive. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of stuff happening that wasn't there five years ago. So this is really, I've, I would say, inspiring in some sense. Um, yeah, and I think one of the reasons there is a lot of activity there that looks good is also because they there's a kind of a rough consensus on the on the underlying protocol they want to use. And it's called ActivityPub. It's now, yeah, the leading protocol in the Fediverse. And I think it's because mostly because of Mastodon. Mastodon picked it up very soon. The ActivityPub uh, guys specifically listened to Mastodon, but not too much. So the activity person said they, they made a little bit of a concession towards that particular need, but it's not really breaking the, the general applicability of this thing. And it's extensible. So Mastodon itself is now driving this rocket. Uh, and I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, the UI is in a, in a shape of, I mean, for, for this kind of unfunded or very little funds going into this project, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the clients are there. There are several server implementations there. The community looks healthy uh, right now. There's a little bit of user growth, which is not visible on this graph. <laughs> but it's, it's, the, it's, 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 a, it's, it's really going up, yeah, trust me. So the, 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 I, I hear people counting the real monthly active users, and I, I heard something about 500,000. So this is a start. We are far away from 2 billion. And the question is, can we ever reach this? I mean, can we ever be competitive in that respect? Uh, yeah, this is going to be a challenging thing. But Mastodon itself says ActivityPub is their choice, will stay their choice. The other projects kind of agree because they see it works. Um, um, it's supported by W3C. There's a really good consensus on it, not too many arguments. And, and the, the technology it uses, like JSON-LD, which I'll show, is, is that there are some components to it that make it look like it's, 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 it may be relevant in the few years still to come. So it's not, it's not just a, yet another protocol. Um, what is it? It's 
it's in short a decentralized and extensible social networking protocol which which is based on actors they have inboxes and outboxes and then the question is how to eff effectively communicate uh, like to avoid certain uh, scalability issues there to avoid uh, yeah, there are some some hidden aspects when you want to run this type of this type of concept when you use this type of concept to run something that is similar to Twitter there are certain things you have to pay attention to but currently this network seems to be healthy seems to be very much in, in like c can scale up way more than it is now uh, as I said it's it's based around actors which have inboxes and outboxes it's it's very simple to read if you look at the activity pub standard itself it's a, it's really simple to understand it's all all based on, on uh, well well tested technologies so HTTP get and stuff like that and JSON LD JSON LD has this nice property that you can add your own extensions within within the context that you're providing so if for example for mastodon it, they had this thing called content warning yeah they came up with this new feature that you can as a when you write something and post it you can put a content warning on it and that means that the, the receiver may not display it at first but only if you click on it and stuff like that this was a feature which is not inherently supported by activity pub but given json ld it was easy to make it happen without violating any uh, activity pub uh, uh, standards. The m one of the main guys behind activity pub is Christopher Lemmer Weber. He's uh, very well known in the FOSDEM community. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to recommend his podcast he's doing with a friend. It's really interesting. They are talking about all kinds of uh, open source and I, I find it very, very uh, worthwhile to listen to. One problem that we see already in, in the Mastodon universe is that most, like 90% of the users, are on 5.4 servers. So this is not scalable. Yeah? There, there is a scalability issue coming up here, and it's already appearing. So the first one, which is for some reason a Chinese one, ah, no, Jap Japanese one, is running a very old version. So it's not, it's not, there's already some, some protocol bifurcation happening there, which is which is an early warning sign, I would say. And it relates somehow to this, uh, to this uh, general issue that, I don't know how many of you have, have read this blog post from the main person behind uh, uh, Signal, Moxie Malinspike. So he, he was claiming the ecosystem needs to be able to move, or the ecosystem is moving somehow, which means he was in that way arguing that Signal should not be federated because then it gets stuck in time because of partitioning bifurcation and then people not being to able not it's not a coherent communication system anymore and uh, so this is one problem we still have to pay attention to and then there's the other problem of even uh, getting sort of uh, being able to get a little bit closer to mainstream adoption of those systems. And here this, this network effect is our main problem that we have here. So within Facebook, you, you can reach 2.2 billion people. As a Facebook user, in, in the Mastodon universe, you can reach 500,000 people right now. So there's a very big difference in utility there. And, and this utility gap is something some people have now spent really time and effort in thinking about how how to how to attack how to yeah come up with a way how to to have break this asymmetry there yeah because it's that's what we have to do and those people are gathering around this movement i think it's called the rebooting the web of trust and it's also there is yeah this one is going to be in prague in september the next iteration of this meetup of those guys so i will be there and it's yeah it's easy to get there it's i would pay this one uh so go there uh <laughs> 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 all i can I say uh, because the current web of trust i don't know if you ha heard the news since l last week or something or a couple days ago the current web of so the the key service the public key server infrastructure that most of us used 
turn out to be a, being attacked and it, it's sort of a systematic problem that cannot be fixed uh, in, a, in, a, in a pragmatic way. So the current web of trust is currently not really running. Uh, if it's not really, so we need to reboot that thing now with some new ideas. And that's what they tried to do, I mean, thought about over the last years. And what they came up with is something also very simple and generic. And they call it the decentralized identifier, of course, which is another scheme to store and represent public key information or any public information that you want to publicly present for some entity, organization, person, whatever. So it's a non-human readable identifier, so that sucks. Uh, but it, 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 this one non-readability has a nice uh, consequence, which means you don't need an identity provider that grants you the right to have this name in the namespace. That's not necessary in this case. You, it's like a public-private key scheme. Anyone who has ever written a PGP encrypted mail basically has used this kind of technology. It's now just about how do we manage the public information? How do, which resource do we use to store the public information? So the DID concept is everything, should, everything that is supposed to be an identifier that is supposed to be decentralized starts with DID, then there's a column, and then there is a small string which they call a method. And there's a list of methods that is now growing, but it's still like not, I will show you later on, it's a small list. So there is no barrier to, to, to propose a new method. You just have to sort of, when you propose it, you have to say how it works publicly. Otherwise, nobody can use that stuff. So for example, SUV stands for a specific method that is, that is, that is designed in a way that you can, can put your, private, uh, your public information that you control with your private key onto a distributed ledger that in, so in this SUV case, it's something where, n where there is a blockchain. blockchain. Yeah, there is a, that's the, <laughs> this thing is misunderstood all over the place because everybody thinks it's about currency and greed and pump and dump and shit. No, they are just thinking about data structure there in order to have an efficient, efficient way to reach consensus on what's the current data state right now. But it's a proof of authority. So basically, there's a, there's a governance structure of uh, how their, their nodes need to be voted on in order to be able to really participate as validators in the network. So it's, yeah, it's a normal organization that tries to run this. Now, it, be, it consists of 60 different uh, um, institutions all over the planet. It's, some are industry, some are academia. There is no state state actor there, but it, they're, they're trying to make a global, like a uh, diverse community there. And yeah, currently those are the allowed validators in that in that distributed ledger. There are many others. And the good thing, this DID thing is not coupled to any of these. There is no blockchain to rule them all. The, the main message is we have many in parallel. That's that that is the sort of the idea behind. What can you do with a DID? You can do everything, basically, when it comes to proving, prov <laughs> <laughs> proving at least authenticity of your connection. So, and without a central provider, without a central entity. All you need to basically have, you need some infrastructure to, to put the public info into. And, and, and it can be a, this kind of database, it can be IPFS, it can be everything. But we need to stick to this, to this common denominator here. Then everything else, the, the network effects should come in play. There are certain industries which are really, really, really waiting for this to happen because they're not interested for some specific business model reasons in any, in any, uh, comp in any privacy information. There are some, yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's not just the uh, civil societies that are interested, it's also some, some economic interests that are popping up there, which is also helping to drive this. Of course, big industries will also try, will also look into this. So IBM is into it. Uh, there are a lot of big industry players that are already uh, participating in this game, but they all agree on this common denominator, which is the DID, which hopefully will turn out to be a useful technology. So right now, uh, this is a short list of all the methods. So you can put it in IPFS, you can put it in Bitcoin, you can put it in the sovereign uh, non-proof-of-work solutions. Uh, currently, yeah, the list is like double that right now, but it's not, it's not, I mean, there is no real fight 
about the namespace in that case. And what? Uh, yeah. The question is, 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 the the question is, the question the there, right? Everybody might want to put uh, God, or uh, I'm the best, or whatever, sure. and then you still have these clashes. The, it, 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 there is no namespace that's managed here. It's just you can put in whatever you want. It's just you, it, it, the system is supposed to be like that, that everybody understands that once they, once you give them your DID, and you're... So the, I can the, put Deutsche Bank there, in the same way as a Deutsche Bank can put it, and I still have no proof that... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the proofing, when you want to proof it, there is another piece which is called verifiable credentials, which refers to these DIDs, which are signed, which, can, which should be signed by, DID, by the DID owners. So, for example, the Deutsche Bank uh, gets, a, gets a verifiable credential by some other state identity that says, ah. this is actually Deutsche Bank. Okay, so you need, again, you need some state identity. Yeah, you can. You can. The, the point is, it's called multi-source identity. You, you yourself, when you prove, when you want to prove that you're a Deutsche Bank, you have to collect these verifiable credentials from other trustworthy entities, and you present them, and they can be verified because this stuff or this stuff is available to everyone. That's the idea. So it's a public resource that helps to be, to have these. Uh, decentralized uh, verification going on and now the the, the deal is that we want to input this technology into the mastodon uh, stack as it currently is because currently when you when you enter the mastodon fediverse you choose one server for most people that is already a big big question because they don't know how to choose i mean they get a list and then yeah and now currently it's you're more or less stuck there i mean there are some they are developing methods to move from another one if your current if your current admin has another idea about moderation or another idea about how to how to maintain this thing than you then how do you get away from it without losing all your relations all your relations are tied to this domain name so we are again at this problem here, yeah. If if this stays like that, that everybody is is attached to five or four servers, the moderation capability is not there for this huge amount of people. It will will go down in usability because spam and everything. The 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 key idea is to 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 distribute the moderation load towards a large number of servers which do their own moderation. Then it then it kind of still stays usable even in the face of spam or trolling or real huge political debate right now. The servers is where the in and out boxes are. Also. Exactly, yeah. And that's where the, where, the moderation, where the moderation happens. So uh, we want to put, we want to enable Mastodon users to sort of add to their profile in Mastodon some decentralized identifiers. That's all. So once the server goes down, so this, this information that I am represented by, an, uh, by three different decentralized identifiers, this information I can put into my Mastodon server, and once this thing goes down, it's already propagated to all the other servers, and they can find me again. If I have still control over these three, because I will always use these three to point to my current home. So it's a funny way to find another way of DNS uh, without, the, without the hierarchy of DNS. That's it. That's more or less what I wanted to tell. Uh, yeah. I, I would, would say one thing left is that I believe that having some way of decentralized identification standard is a... I don't think there's an alternative to that. In the same way IP came up, there will be something similar in, in that in that space, and it looks like it's going to be DID because it's the, the simplest common thing that they came up with. So, yeah. So please, when you see DID, don't think immediately about it's blockchain bullshit. 
people are trying to put it into that corner. Uh, some people are misunderstanding it. I think it's not really connected to it. Um, but we, 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 we leverage part of, for example, the whole crypto space has led to an increasement of, to, to, a better, to an improvement of the technology, how we manage our private keys. So people, are, since they're now trading like, w w like valuable stuff, using private keys, they are now, there are better wallet technologies there and stuff. And we can, use, we, we can hopefully make use of that thing. So passwords are slowly going away and uh, private keys are replacing them more and more. I think DIDs will, will gain relevance and I hope that ActivityPub is still around in 10 years and we will love it. Yeah, so please spread the word that ActivityPub is a cool thing. Thanks. Thanks.